So far, we have learned about the Comcell console, we set up libraries, and configured our policies. Now we will take a look at how clients and agents are configured. This section will review agent installation and sub-client configurations using a file system agent as an example. A client is any production system that is protected by Commvault software. Clients use agents to protect the data by installing the agent directly on the client or using a proxy client. When an agent is deployed to a client, it appears in the Comcell browser under the client computer entity. To protect physical servers, let's look at how to install client agents. First, we'll review how to download the latest packages in the software cache. Then, using a push installation process, we will follow up with an example of a Windows agent installation. Prior to installing software, you must first download the latest software packages to the ComServe cache directory. For information about specific agent requirements, refer to the Commvault online documentation at the following URL. The Comcell console push installation method is used to deploy Commvault software agents to one or more clients at the same time. You can perform a remote push installation from the tools ribbon in the Comcell console. Click the Add Remove Software icon and then select Install Software. The required software packages can be downloaded or copied to Comserve Cache Directory and then pushed to selected computers. During installation, clients in a domain that are not yet part of the Comcell group can be selected for installation. Users accessing these computers must have administrative privileges required for installing software. Use the installation wizard to specify the operating system. Manually select the computers. Software will only be installed on the selected list of computers. Enter the host name of the computers. Enter account information. Select packages to install. Enter recommended settings for the selected software. Enter additional install options and any other optional settings for the installation. Review and verify all selected options and click Finish to run the job immediately. Subclients are used to define data that will be protected in a containerized format. Each client will have one or more subclients, and each subclient container will manage specific content. For example, a file system agent has a default subclient that protects the complete file system. However, additional subclients can be created. Subclients can be independently configured, scheduled for backups, and associated with storage policies that have different retention settings. Commvault software handles data protection at the subclient level, where each subclient, when protected, runs as a separate job. Content defined in a subclient is associated with a storage policy. This determines what library will be used during backups and the retention of the data. In this example, you can see that two subclients are being directed to two different storage policies. The first storage policy is applied to the default subclient and retains data for 14 days. The second storage policy is applied to the user defined subclient and retains data for 60 days. This next demonstration shows you how to configure a subclient and assign it to a storage policy. Now let's review the client tree structure. We will expand client computers, expand the ComServe client we're using as an example here, expand the file system agent, and click on the default backup set. On the right hand side, we will see the detailed information of what's in the backup set. These are the subclients. It's important to note that when you first install agent software on a machine, as long as you have your storage policies and your schedule policies pre-configured and you select them during the installation process, there is nothing you need to do to, for the subclients. They're automatically configured. But there are some important options that I want to explain to you inside the subclient. So let's right-click on a default subclient, select properties. In the general tab, 
we can go and set the name of the subclient. The default subclient is the default name, but we can change this name at any time. In the content tab, there's two important things I want to show you. In the default subclient, there's always going to be this backslash. This is unique to the default subclient. What this means is this default subclient is used with an auto detect mechanism. That is that backslash. So for example, this machine has a C drive and a D drive. The default subclient, because it has a backslash, automatically protects both the C and the D drive. Later on down the road, if you go and add another drive, that drive, because the auto detect feature is enabled, will always be protected. It is strongly recommended not to take away this backslash from the default subclient. Down at the bottom, we have the system state option. You want to back up system state if you're going to use Commvault to recover the entire system. This will ensure when you go to browse the data that not only your data will come back, but the entire state of the system upon restore will come back. The next tab is the filters tab. At the top is the option to use global filters. Global filters are set in control panel and you can inherit those filters into each subclient. If you set this to off, then those filters will not be inherited. You can also set local subclient level filters. You could click the add button or browse to add additional filters. They will be unique just to the subclient. Down at the bottom, you have the exceptions option. So let me give you an example of how you would use this. We do not want to back up MP3 files. So in the global filters, we set a rule not to back up any MP3 files. We set the global filters to be on, which means that global filter to filter out MP3s is inherited into the subclient. However, we have an AV department in our company that does work with MP3 files. So what we can do here is create this subclient, point it to the location where those MP3 files are. And in the exceptions, we could add an exception of MP3. What this means is anything that's in that exception will always override what is set in the exclusion filters. The last thing I want to talk about is the storage device tab. As I mentioned earlier, when you first deploy agent software, we will automatically associate the storage policy to the default subclient that you selected in the installation process. If for any reason you need to go and change the storage policy, you can go into the subclient, go to the storage device tab, and in the drop-down box, select the storage policy.